Welcome to Movies, Films, and Flicks. I am Mark Hoffmeyer, and joining me is a man who is currently enjoying some sesame cake. It's Jay Cluett. Can I, can I touch the sesame cake? Am I allowed to? Eat the cake. And okay, uh, have the cake I will. And coffee. <laughs> I, I will eat the cake until I am no longer allowed to eat the cake. Stop eating my sesame cake. <laughs> Put down. <laughs> Stop Don't eating. Don't worry, no. Uh, that was that, was that, that amazing? amazing? Yeah. I, 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 this is the second time I've, I've, I've seen... <laughs> we'll get there, listeners. Yeah. Congo. Uh, this is the second time I've seen Congo, um, and I just, I forgot he's in it for what, like, for a minute, maybe, and then he's gone, mm-hmm. and he's he's one of the most memorable parts of the film, is this Daryl Indo in his sesame cake. That's just such a weird scene, and I think that's why I love Congo so much, because uh, you have Tim Curry as a guy named Herkimer Hermolka, <laughs> and he's... I'm, gl- I'm glad you said it. <laughs> and he looks at him... So Delroy Lindo's character looks at him and just goes, you are a big bag of shit. <laughs> and, like he just calls him a big, he's like, you owe everybody money. And then I just love, I, so he, I love he yells at the group. He's like, eat the cake and coffee. And Laura Linney, who's an absolute boss in this movie playing Karen oh. Gloss, and Ernie Hudson as Captain Monroe Curry, who's a, I love him in this movie. They don't do it. But Tim Curry just grabs a piece of sesame cake, smells it, takes a big bite, and then he has to spit it out. Uh, it's just the weirdest scene. <laughs> it's 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 great. This could be Dora and his best best scene in all of cinema, perhaps. Uh, I've not seen all of his work. I'm sure he's done better. But it's it's such a just a, a Congo is full of these weird little scenes that. You could take out the the Delroy Lindo scene and it wouldn't change the film at all. It's yeah. just a little aside. Like, oh, they get caught up there. They pay him some money. They go on and no one ever mentions it again. The same thing. If you, if you took Joey Pants out of the film, change. Uh, he's just he just has these couple of little scenes here and there, and then hey, he's gone. Uh, but I love his scenes in it. I love both of them. <laughs> how how dare you suggest that any Ventro and Captain Wanta would be removed? No, I'm joking. I it, don't want them no, to be no, I'm rem- joking. They they uh, no, their scenes mean nothing the film, in regards to the movie. Inconsequential to yeah. the plot. <laughs> but they are pure gold. It's uh, yeah. All right, I was gonna pitch you something. So I've been thinking about this, and I I watched Congo last week, and I put up the clip of Delroy Lindo and the sesame cake up on Movie Some of the Flicks Facebook because it's just one of my favorite scenes. Now you could completely lose Peter Elliot, Dylan Walsh's character, and Amy. I mean- Gladly. You could, uh, <laughs> and the, I mean, you and Richard, played by Grant Hesloff, who's an Oscar winner now, but you could just get rid of them and just have, think about this, Dr. Karen Ross, the great white hunter, Captain Monroe Kelly, and Herkimer Hermolka, and Joey Pants, just kind of cruising around. Yeah, I mean, I think that would be a better film. Congo is remembered as being the talking gorilla film. Yes. Which... Firstly, Amy can't really talk. No. She can do sign language, and then there's, these, there's a power glove that allows that translates her sign language into speaking. So when they have the demonstration at the, at the start, and the guys in the audience are like, oh my god, this girl can talk. No, no, no. No, no, there's a, a robot thing that can communicate. It's it's good, it's an improvement, it's impressive, but it's not a talking gorilla. <laughs> the fact that she drinks martinis, that's more impressive than the fact that she can sign language, I think. And then burp. <laughs> and burp. And she smokes a little cig- cigarillo kind of thing as well. Don't inhale. Uh, but yeah, if, if you <laughs> don't excise them, it, they're, they're unnecessary, completely unnecessary from the, uh, from the main plot. I was going to ask you, actually, uh, who would you consider to be the main character of this film? Uh, what is the A story? Is the A story Karen Ross going to try and save Bruce Campbell? Is it Dylan Walsh taking his, gave me the grower? Is it Tim Curry trying to find whatever the name of this place is? I can't remember the name. Gin. Yes, okay. I have it written down here somewhere. Zing. Yeah, or is it is it Jodon Baker trying to get his diamonds? Because there's all these there's these four different reasons that they're going to this uh, this lost city of Zinj, and n- none of them seem to be to take precedent over any of the other ones. And that's kind of why I like Congo. Is I don't know if this is intentional or not, but it it ignores any kind or a lot of cliche, a lot yeah. of way, way you'd expect the plot to go. So you'd, you'd think at the start you've got uh, when when Laura Linney and Dylan Walsh first meet at the airport, they're like. Uh, Professor, professor, that kind of scene. Um, they're initially at, at odds with each other. You know, she's she's a, a a geek with a cell phone, as he calls it, and he belongs oh, in the zoo. He's so mean to her, right? 
Um, but you'd think, oh, they're initially at odds with each other. But at the end, it's going to be a romance. Because that's what happens in, in 90s films, in most <laughs> films, is you have these two, a man and a woman. They're at odds. And then, oh, over time, over time, they come together. Oh, and romance. But there is no sign of any romantic connection between anyone in this film, apart from Dylan Walsh and the, and the gorilla. Yep. That's the strongest romantic connection is between Peter Elliot and Amy. So that I, and you know, Laura Lily starts off disliking Amy. You think, oh, they're gonna come around and they'll need each other. No. Nope. You think Amy's gonna be important at some point? No. Nope. <laughs> nope. Nope. Just, <laughs> you, there's lots of directions you think it's gonna take based on conventional filmmaking, and it doesn't. And I don't know if that's intentional or if they just kind of forgot to write a film. But <laughs> I, I, I like I like the unexpected outcome uh, uh, directions that this takes. <laughs> like how? All right, I want to watch a movie where it's Joe Don Baker's character R. D. R. B. Travis just in a boardroom yelling. He's like yeah. a he's an abusive man. He doesn't care that his son dies, right? No, I oh, I did not know. I didn't catch that he was supposed to be Bruce Campbell's dad. I think that's kind of because he's he he has no regard to how his son died <laughs> Who? ever. Yeah. <laughs> Ever so. <laughs> I gotta tell you, I love that. So there's a movie, uh, a book. I'm sorry, that Bruce Campbell wrote. It's called Make Love: The Bruce Campbell Way. About yes, him getting. Tell me about it last yeah, time. Man. Oh, yeah. sorry. I, I guess All I'm right, bringing. It. So on this one, like in in the book. Sorry if I'm repeating myself for who's ever listening. But in this book, he gets on an A movie with Mike Nichols, Richard Gere, and Renee Zellweger, and turns it into a total B picture. And I love in his short role in this film. He's talking about yeah, this whole place does the shimmy, and then and then he goes yeah, Johnny on the spot laser. Like he he turns it into a B movie with his it, acting, and it's so it's, funny. It's such a Bruce Campbell role. Yeah, the what he's got, and it's he does a great job with it. I wrote I this whole place shimmies is in my notes as well. Like that's that's such a a Bruce Campbellism that cannot have been in the script. No, <laughs> um, like if you know Bruce Campbell, you know that was not like that was a this whole place is, this whole place did the shimmy. Like oh gosh, I love it. Oh man, and. I gotta tell you, that monkey punched out Jeffrey's eye. And I have to tell you something. Oh my god. <laughs> when you watch this movie, this is what I want you guys to do. I want you to pour whatever you can do tea, you can do water, you can do coffee, you can do vodka, you can do a martini, you can do an old fashioned, a Manhattan, a beer, whatever. But take a sip every time someone says Jeffrey in the first five <laughs> minutes of this movie. Because Jeffrey. They say his name. Where's Jeffrey? We got to go get Jeffrey. Hey, Jeffrey, where you at? Oh, go get Jeffrey. Oh, he went to go get Jeffrey. Where's Jeffrey going? Hey, I'll, I got to go get my backpack deep in the jungle. Jeffrey, where are you? I don't know if you noticed that. I, I did. And his was a name I did not forget. Him and Charlie. But I could <laughs> not tell you the names of Laura Linney's or Dylan Walsh's characters. And I'm looking at the one screen now. But before I called them up, I had no idea what they were, what they were called. But Jeffrey and Charlie, well, that's everyone knows who they are. That's the point of the film is those two. I, I just, I love it. I I just, they keep, and then Jeffrey gets his eyeball punched out uh -huh. or ripped out. But but we see him later and he seems relatively intact when we see his body, when they find the, the, the giant geode kind of thing. Is he, someone like, else's I, eyeball? I, well, I think it's his eyeball that you don't see a close up of his head. But what I mean is like it, the rest of him is intact. So it's not like he was beaten up till his eye came out. I think it was some kind of gorilla surgery to like pluck it out like like um oh wow kill, it's a kill bill fight it's a kill yeah. bill fight but he took out the eye <laughs> oh like daryl hannah and uma yeah. thurman oh <laughs> yes because you, you know hermoka gets his head hermoka and this he, does. Like, <laughs> it gets, he gets her uh her hermikers Her yeah hermikers <laughs> there it is and his head gets <laughs> smushed so i guess a gorilla could have smut like but we see jeffrey later so that rules out a head smush with an eye an eye plop. Does that make well, sense? It's not his eye. I, I prefer to think that it is his eye. And, but, uh, and a gorilla just went like a little snake, <laughs> plucked his yeah. eye with his big thing, beef, these monkeys' big beefy fingers pulling out his eye and then throwing it at Bruce Campbell. That's some next level <laughs> intelligent right there. That is. <laughs> yeah. Well, again, could have been accidental. Might have got away from him. <laughs> uh, but. <laughs> He was he was like juggling with it. He's he, yeah, with these gorillas like try to pretend to juggle, try to practice the juggling. He's juggling with eyeballs. So that's the whole reason that he kills people is to get their eyeballs to juggle them. Down. And you know, he was just he he can he can master three, try to do five, won't get away from him. And that's you know that's what Bruce Campbell screamed at. He screamed at this gorilla trying to juggle because that's a terrifying thought. Man, if get this, wow! You just gave me one. You just gave me a top five MFF visual, and we've done about two hundred eighty episodes. There, Bruce Campbell turns around. 
and a giant gorilla is juggling eyeballs. But not very well, sloppily. Whoa! Well, they are kind of goofy because at the end they're cannonballing into the lava. (laughs) I hate the lava at the end of this film. But I I hate this. The the film ends with a volcano erupting. It's a cop out ending. They're behind, like behind them are holes that they can run through that they came from. Yeah. But instead, they're bumping each other into the lava. If these are creatures that can juggle eyeballs, yeah, man. you think they'd have the uh, the wherewithal to you know try and escape? They're, they're doomed because there's a volcano erupting and it's going to wipe out their entire home. And whether this film took place or whether the, the rest of the plot took place or not, those gorillas are all going to die because that volcano is going to erupt and wipe them out, which isn't mentioned until I think the final third of the film that there's a volcano that's going to erupt. This whole place does a shimmy. <laughs> but yeah, that, that could just be earthquakes. Yeah, you're right. But... Oh, because Jodan calls, right? And he, he, does, and he yeah. tells Karen Ross, that whole place is looking unstable. <sighs> and he just screams. Just, because they need to add an element of time to it, I, I guess, to try and add, add some urgency to to the actions. I, 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 don't, feel, I don't like it. I feel so bad for Stan Winston. I, I sent you an article. There's a really excellent breakdown of how the creatures were created in this. <laughs> and a lot of people give this movie crap because they say that the monkeys look terrible. So I Frank, think they look amazing. Yeah, I know. I think they look great. So Frank Marshall, they just CGI wasn't there yet. They did. They could not. They everyone talks about Jurassic Park and it's CGI, but that was filmed at night. There was much less. There's a lot of monkey in this. You and can't. It's, it's a it's a lot easier to do reptiles than mammals. Oh yeah, no fur. fur. Yeah. yeah, that's why. What Monsters Inc. was one. Of, we talked about this on our Pixar ranking. We did. Yes, yeah. with Sully. Yeah. Sully. Sully fur. Yeah. But I think okay, Amy does not look bad. I don't know where people are like, okay, it's a, it's a person in a suit, but I have seen much worse people in suits and and Uh, Oh, go for it. I I think the, 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 what looks bad is the killer gorillas because they're, Mm -hmm. because they're shot. Um, the first few times you see them, it's like real grainy and overexposed and slow motion. And it just kind of looks a bit crap. Uh, because they're trying to set up as horror villains. Uh, but the Amy looks, I think looks fantastic. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's a person in the suit, but it could even if you didn't stay, you could maybe go down the the motion capture Planet of the Apes kind of route, which is probably if, if they were to remake Congo, which I think they might, given the success of like Westworld and how Jurassic Jurassic World films are doing. Yeah. They might be looking around for other Crichton properties. And this could be improved. I think oh, we can agree. Absolutely. <laughs> this could be upon. Get Tim Curry back in it, please, and Ernie Hudson back in it, please. In fact the whole cast. Anyone who's still alive, get him back in. Congo uh, two. Congo to They gotta go get the Amy back. Or it's Amy's kids. Oh, and then uh, those bad gorillas, some survived. Oh, yeah. Back and to the jungle. Amy sends an SOS to Dylan Walsh, and he gets it. Yeah. What's like, he doing these days? Well, he must be, must be available. Yeah. I mean, well, he can't he, live off nip tuck money forever. Yeah, it's true. He was in The Stepfather, but that was like 10 years ago. <laughs> Let's get them all back. That would be yeah. amazing. I mean, and, and all right. I, and then one more thing I got for you. Like, um, I love how, like, badass Dr. Karen Ross is. She, like, when, and I also feel like whenever she's around Dylan Walsh, I'm like, get away from him. Get away from yeah. her, Dylan Walsh. Like, he has a leech on it. Uh, get away you know, from this film, Dylan yeah. Walsh. Just go away. He has, like, a leech on him, and he's like, how do you get it off? And they all make fun of him. They, like, and, and then, but in this movie, right, she's just a complete badass. She sets up this gun system. Like is is just like let's go, we got to do this. And then at the end, she pulls out this massive laser, a laser, and just starts wiping out, ripping, like blasting gorillas in half, ripping off gets, their uh, arms. She even gets like a, a, a Schwarzenegger one liner. They're going on the extinction yeah. list. And, like and the more, dangerous species yeah. list. <laughs> was that amazing? Put them on the awesome. danger. I was like, whoa! And then when Dylan Walsh and Amy are running behind. She just is like, okay, and she chops a tree in half with a laser, and it falls perfectly in front of them. Perfect. And it made me uh, – like, when you see badasses like this in movies – and no one ever says you're a badass. You know, we know she's in the CIA. She has some fun dialogue with Monroe Kelly. But she's never – like, yeah, she's like, I just – I'm not I'm not a jerk. Like, I, I don't, I don't want to be like a loveless idiot. But the whole movie – oh, dude, the heat-seeking rocket. 